Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Top 5. Alright, we're getting started right away here with Close Match. This is what I named this one. Alright, let's see. I got an APC start thinking he's going to go for infantry to block him off so I can follow it up with a pit bull for his harvesters. He went for a pit bull from the start to go straight after my harvester, hoping that I didn't go for infantry. Um, he's attacking my base, so I got my stuff in position, but then notice he doesn't have a harvester. So I pull my pit bull out of there, keeping his guy in the Tiberium. Once he starts shooting at my APC anyway, bring the pit bull back. He pulls up some more rocket squads. I pull out again. And then he's shooting at the APC, so I push forward, and he killed it, so I pull back. Get out my harvester. He definitely has the advantage as far as the units on the field. <clears throat> Trying to do what I can with my pit bull against his. Get out an APC to deal with his massive rocket squads, which I assumed he was still building them. I didn't realize he had built riflemen. And he had another rocket squad. He's going after my harvester, which, good choice of him. I've got two APCs now, take it out that infantry. Build my barracks, probably to pump out rocket squads to deal with his pit bulls. Try to get my harvester out of there to save it, because if I could have saved that thing, um, that would have been a huge problem for him money-wise. But I didn't save it, so now he's got enough money to get his out and continue pumping out troops. He's got the troops, he's got the field advantage right now, he's going to get that first missile. Honestly, all because he got my harvester. Uh, I got out a tank, tried to deal with his vehicles and to go harvester harass. Rocket squads dealing with his vehicles, he goes for some disruptor troopers, good choice, they're gonna tear up my rocket squads. I'm trying to body block with my rocket squads, get out some jet troopers. Uh, I guess I'm going for his harvester with those. My tank should have been shooting his harvester too. It was poorly shooting rocket squads though. And, but then he poorly pulled off of my tank for a bit, leaving it to do massive damage to his harvester, so I got his harvester. Money-wise, we're about equal now. I use that extra money that I had, however, for an ion cannon to clear out some of his numbers, and now I have the APCs to sort of body block the points. It was a little early though. I should have waited till uh, a little bit further on to try to body block. Um, but I was hoping to hold him off, kill a bunch of his infantry, and then bring in new units. <clears throat> if he does really well on blocking me from the top left, he could easily win this right here and there. Right here and now, sorry. Uh, but does not look like he does well. I don't body block very well on the bottom right. If I had moved my rocket squads forward, that I would have got that missile a lot easier. Um... But I did, again, use an ion cannon, take out some guys. I got the missile. We're now pretty even missile-wise. We're probably pretty even money-wise. He does have that definite unit advantage because I was not pumping units out like I should have been. Uh, probably because of that ion cannon I did to get that missile. Jet troopers. Uh, looks like I'm going after his base right now. That's actually not a very smart move on my part because the third missile goes by very quick. Too quick to go for the base this late very effectively unless I could keep him keep the point neutralized um, apparently I, instead of going for his base I did throw an ion cannon on the second one turning the missile in my favor brought my jet troopers back so I was smart enough to realize going straight up for the base like that was not a good idea uh, trying to get something on the left point to neutralize it I saw that he was coming with the disruptors got my infantry out to block later and my APC in to block it up front Still trying to get something in. He's body blocking me really well with his vehicles. Um, got another APC in there. Oh, there's, there it is. Ion cannon to wipe him off the point. Oh, it did not kill his pit bull. That is shocking. Um, but I do have my APC on the bottom. If he can just move his pit bull up, he's got this. It looks like he's moved it up. It's a close match. Uh, I kill this guy just in time, just barely. Got my jump chip troopers, and I just cannot get into that top left point. I'm still body blocking, keeping him out of the bottom right. 
I mean, this this is getting ridiculous at this point. I get some more jump jet troopers, and I decide to use them to try to fly over the points. But for some reason, they go around. But finally, I get them to go over it. And I'm going back and forth, going over it. And yes, they die, but they last just long enough to while they're flying back and forth over his units that I get the missile off. If they had gone over both of the units instead of around at first, I would get it off a lot sooner. Um, but yeah, you don't have to be on a point even. You just have to be able to send something through it. Air units can go over it. Jump jet troopers or ship over the guys can go over it. You just need to micro them back and forth so they stay on it and they don't actually get off. <coughs> That's assuming... Anyway, but yeah, it was a very good match right there. Um, and that tactic of mine won me the game that just, you know flying over his units, even though it didn't work out the way I wanted it to at first. And that was against Hydra. Units were pretty well matched. It was a, a good match there. Now, here's one. Spamming the same unit way too much is going to equal a fail, because you can easily counter it if all the, the opponent's units are the same. If you mix units, you're going to do a lot better than if you spam. This guy is in the Tiberium League. He's got higher level units. He should kick my butt and apparently I won this one and from the name of it because he was spamming the same stuff over and over again he probably spammed up like three or four of one type of unit maybe he switched to another type but then he spammed three or four or more again you want a mixture usually two is enough three is a lot three is pushing it any more than that is ridiculous and this is based on types now again sometimes depending on what your opponent does you do need to keep spamming but that means that you're spamming stuff to counter him, not stuff that's not working because it's already being countered. Anyway, so we both have an infantry start very similar, but he's got me on level. Um, he got the defense advantage, too, on the bottom. I don't know why I pulled away. I think I was trying to pull him out, yeah. Anyway, there's my buggy. Turn that battle around. And he threw down a turret power. That turret power, honestly, I don't think it's very good because I just avoid it. <clears throat> I mean, if you can't avoid it, it's extremely useful. If you're trying to block something off, so he wanted like protect artillery or something, extremely useful. It has its uses, but in that situation, for 40 points, he barely scratched a buggy. It wasn't... Anyway. See, so I got Rifleman covering my top left, moving my buggy down to try to take the bottom middle. He... Pauses the timer with an air unit. I get out some rocket squads because he's doing air. See, and now this is the first thing he spammed. He spammed air, air, air. He's fighting. All that he saw was two buggies. Those are both anti-air units. I mean, now, if he had built a, a bomber or something like a, a banshee, which is good against vehicles, that would have worked. But he built something that's good against infantry to fight vehicles that can fight air. It's not really an advantage. The only reason his guys are even able to fight those buggies equally is because they were level 10s against, what, level 8 or 9 buggies? <clears throat> but then I decided to get out attack bikes. Um, now, my attack bikes are not going to do anything against his infantry. So I'm just essentially using them to block and keep away from his harvesters and harvester harass him. Um... My jump jets aren't doing very good against this rifleman. This is really bad setup for me. Uh, I'm kind of wanting some of my guys to die and trying to do as much as I can with them so I can start pumping out other things. So I get riflemen to deal with his infantry and buggies to deal with his infantry, and he goes back to the air. So now he's, he's back in that safe set, but he still does have the jump jets, which can definitely do a lot to those buggies. But at this point, I'm going for the missile. You know, I'm trying to throw everything I can on it. There we go. Um, you know what? Looking back on that, I didn't really feel like he overly spammed. He spammed the air, and then he spammed, I guess, the infantry. Maybe that's why I called it spam fail. I mean, it wasn't as bad as I thought. It was, I mean, he just, he had little spams. He didn't do big spams. So I th he, that was probably a poor name for that, but he did a good job. Just didn't quite make it because he did too much of the air. And then too much of the infantry. And then when we went back there, it was too late. Um, Wolverines versus tanks. Now, this is something I've seen a lot of people doing lately. Wolverines are good against infantry and air. And these Wolverines are much higher level than my guys because they're tens. Um, 
And yeah, they can fight a tank almost on equal ground. That is like two levels below them, or even a full level below them and, you know, upgrades. But <clears throat> you, you still, tanks are what counters Wolverines. You don't want to bring Wolverines in to fight tanks. It's well, what they're not good at is fighting vehicles. Uh, yeah, so it's like a pit bull or, you know, a rhino, a wolverine can, de or their counterparts, a wolverine can win, but it's still not necessarily, you know, what it's built for. Anyway, he went for rifleman. I took a little longer, got out uh, rhino right away, chased this guy off. Get another rhino. He's got a rocket squad. <coughs> See, I'm focusing fire on his rocket squad. Was rockets are focusing on my rhino. Now I've got two rhinos on his one rocket squad. He's bringing up a second. I pull out a rhino for a second. And if I'm smart, I'll put in the one with full health to attack first, and then bring the other one back. Yeah, so now he's attacking... With full, oh, no, he micromanaged and told it to attack the other guy. If he didn't micromanage, that other one would have been shooting the whole time he was shooting the other one. Also, because he put on a second rocket squad, he managed to kill the other one as well. Um, and he gets the first missile, so... And that's because I didn't have riflemen to counter his rocket squads with this build. So spamming rockets uh, was really smart of him. It worked out, especially since his rockets were able to beat my rhinos, which normally will counter rockets quite well as a soft counter. They're a soft counter for each other. They're pretty equal depending on how it's done. But I managed to get out sniper teams, which is what I have in place of the riflemen, so now his rocket squads are useless. And I've got them placed behind the rocket squads, but he's doing the rhinos now like I was. He could do it better, however, because... He's got a level advantage. Now, so I have to go for pit bulls. And at this point, I'm also thinking I need points. So that's why I threw the sniper team to do as much as I could against this infantry. Got a pit bull to fight his uh, rhinos. And bring in a tank now to deal with the pit bull. So, and I could put the sniper teams behind the pit bull. As, now, here, here's where he starts to do the Wolverine fail. That 10 Wolverine wants to fight anything that I've got except the tank. And what's he do? He's trying to fight the tank. The only way that that can win is because of its level advantage and because it was being healed by that air unit. <coughs> and, but still, the tank's a counter for it. So, I, And with the pit bull support as well, the pit bull and the tank, oh yeah, I should trash these rhinos. I make the mistake, though, I don't tell that pit bull to attack the uh, the Wolverine So because it was a, attacking rocket squads. Obviously, it lost from that. But I still take out his Wolverine with just my already damaged tank. And now he's got a third Wolverine, and again trying to heal it, and is again attacking the tank. That is not what Wolverines do. They fight infantry. They fight air. That Wolverine should be attacking my snipers and nothing else. He needs something else to deal with my uh, tanks, and what it should be is rocket squads. Now he's building pit bulls. Yes, two pit bulls can kill a tank, but tanks are still a better counter for the pit bulls. He's spending 80 to kill 60, and the only reason those pit bulls are even doing as much as they are is, again, because he's got the healer. I mean... <coughs> and here comes yet another Wolverine. Now, he's the, it does actually do pretty good against the pit bull, but... Still not what it's built for. It's not built to fight vehicles. He should be fighting the snipers with those and then bring in rocket squads to kill the guys. And he's got another Wolverine. And again, he's fighting tanks with Wolverines. Wolverines kill infantry and air. It is the same mistake again and again and again. And he's only doing it because he's seen his Wolverines defeat tanks before. That's only because uh, if he's fighting like level 8 tanks or 9 tanks, which even now is a 9, you know, they will do almost decently because of their level advantage. And if he throws healers with them, and their cost advantage too, they're an 80 cost unit to a 60. But he's losing 80 cost to 60 again and again and again, and he just couldn't push me back with that. <clears throat> you, you gotta build the counters. If, if something doesn't counter it, it really shouldn't be fighting it. Or I mean, there's obvious times where you're just trying to hold the point, you know, or this is all you've got, you gotta use what you have, you know, to try to get that missile or finish off a unit, but he was building those fresh and sending them straight into tanks again and again and again. It, it, he would have done much, much better just spending $20 on a rocket squad than, you know, 80 on a Wolverine. 
<laughs> and then he would have been able to, with a 20 rocket squad, kill that tank instead of lose to the tank. And he'd have lots of Tiberium left for other things. Or later, I mean, let's, real quick here, that was... He's got, looking at his arsenal right here, if instead of, you know, those, I don't seven Wolverines he built, whatever, if he had just built one rocket squad in place of one of those Wolverines, and he could have done that two or three times easily, he would have had $60 for each one. So if he had done that just twice, not only would he have done much better in the battle, but with that extra money, instead of maybe building the other Wolverines, which, again, don't do good against my vehicles, he could have pumped out the Zone Troopers for 120. Uh, like I said, 120 is exactly what he would save to build two rocket squads to place two of those Wolverines. So instead of losing twice, he would have won twice against tanks. In theory, the snipers would have caused problems if they were behind the tanks like early on. I will give him that. Um, but if he had taken, say, his first Wolverine, ignored the tank, taken out the snipers, then had the rocket squad come in, take out the tank, you know, then bring in another Wolverine and take out the new snipers I built, then brought out, you know, either another rocket squad or a zone trooper at that point. Uh, the zone troopers would have done very well against my stuff as long as I didn't have snipers on the field, which the Wolverines, he could, he could have comboed Wolverines and zone troopers. And then with his healing drones behind those, instead of, you know, a Wolverine fighting a tank or multiple tanks, you know, I just think he would have done much better with that. <clears throat> anyway, but I can see what he was trying to do because he didn't want to build infantry, which is his other high-tech unit, to deal with my tanks while snipers are on the field, or rocket squads to deal with my tanks while snipers are on the field. So building the Wolverine first was definitely a good idea. Trying to heal it or heal it when there's two of them, definitely a good idea. But ignoring the snipers and fighting tanks with Wolverines is not a good idea, especially when they're right next to each other. He could have taken one extra shot, moved forward, completely wiped out the 50-cost sniper, yes, with an 80-cost guy, but then with a 20-cost guy, kill the 60-cost tanks. Instead, he kept losing 80 to 60, 80 to 60, 80 to 60, losing, losing, losing. All right. But moving on, all right, Mr... Gersquard? I don't know how to say this name. I mean, he does YouTube videos, too. I've actually watched a lot of his videos. When he first started, it was kind of hard to watch because they weren't that good. He, But he was new. Everyone makes mistakes. I mean, I look at my earlier videos, and even I'm like, why, why? Hell, even some of my newer videos, I still make lots of mistakes. <clears throat> but <laughs> he kicked my butt on this, completely wiped the floor with me, and he's actually got me, I think, at levels a little bit here. I've got 999... 899 and he's got 998999. Actually, no, we're equal on levels except for heroes. He's got me on one level with his hero and he's got me on league advantage. Um, but that aside, this is a pretty even match and he just completely outplayed me this whole match. So let's go ahead and watch that. But yeah, he's got it was a challenge match for me, but he's definitely gotten a lot better. And sometimes it's, you know. A rock, paper, scissors thing, um, or a little advantage can turn to another, and then a little outplay here can give you a much bigger advantage later down the road. It's a snowball effect. <coughs> but yeah, he completely outdid me. I mean, right here, I start with the harvester, then go rifleman, rewit, rifleman, harvester. So I actually start with a money advantage, and a rifleman is the same level. Um, there's a lot of little play around, trying to lure the other person in, pull back, you know, don't fall into a the defensive trap, and then I try to push forward. So, again, I'm at, I got a little damage on him, so I'm actually winning. But he goes for flamers, like, right away instead of a second rifleman. And that puts my rifleman at a huge disadvantage. I need to get out of there. I pull in a uh, buggy to deal with the flamers, and he's going around the other way to deal with my rifleman. And I push in to deal with his other guys. Now, those rocket squads just tear up my buggy. I should have focused fire on those rocket squads. I didn't do very good. I was hoping to kill the rifleman and then bring in my rifleman to kill the rocket. <clears throat> and he does more flamers. Now, these guys are expensive, so my buggies are cheaper on the other hand. However, I've now had to have built three. Um, still trying to deal with those rockets. And he pulls up with a tank. I don't even have... I'm not even building here. I'm too busy micromanaging. That's not good of me. I and then I even throw down an airfield. Oof. 
See, my buildings cost me here. I spent a little too much early on on my buildings. I think it's because I saw the t tanks and flamers. They don't fight air at all. I want to bring in some air units. And I do, and I, I push, make him have to run away with his flamers. He brings in rockets. I try to avoid his rockets with my air unit. And then I just decide to send my air unit up to deal with his harvester because I can't stay at the point. Trying to take out his tank, get m my buggies to take out his flamer, and then... I, I don't like fighting tank against uh, rocket squad, but I wanted to get on that point. I already missed the missile, though. And his stealth tank tore up my air unit. It did damage to some other stuff. And now it's completely reloaded again. That stealth tank causes me major issues. You know, I'm, I try to get to it, and I lose a lot of stuff trying to get to it because he, he guards it very well with that rocket squad, the tank, the other things that he brings out. Like, I tried bombing with an air unit, tried to get it out of there. He chased it all the way down, completely took out another 60 cost unit. So he's taken out 120, more than 120 already with that one stealth tank. <clears throat> and I try to take it out again, but I get there too slow. I can't shoot at it because it's cloaked. He takes down another... Now he's taken out 100, over 180 in cost total. And I'm still trying to take it out. He's reloaded again by the time I get there. It, and takes out yet another guy. 200 and over 240 cost and stuff with that one <laughs> unit, that one stealth tank. Just tore me up. I couldn't do anything. And that, that was his big advantage right there. Just good microing with a lot of his other units. Really hard for me to counter his flamers. I just kept trying to take him down, but they kept coming back, and they were surviving so long. And then his tanks and rockets while I'm dealing with his flamers, you know. I got an air unit trying to get the obelisk. I, I was having a money problem that game. I couldn't pump stuff out fast enough, mostly because of that one stealth tank just tore me up. He did so well with the micromanagement. I was just outdone that entire match. That was really poor of me, and I... Honestly, I'm not even sure what I could have done very differently, because I, as soon as I saw that stealth tank, I'm like, let me kill it while it's reloading. But I got to it right after it reloaded. Again, and again, and again. Or right as it cloaked and I couldn't shoot. Again, and again. Uh, he he took out so at least four banshees alone, not to mention that one tank. <clears throat> I think he took out. Oh my god! It just it trashed me. And that stuff was costly. That's not cheap. So his one stealth tank, and it wasn't just the stealth tank. It was he was micromanaging other units in front of it. He was pulling it back properly. He utilized it to the max to the maximum of its capabilities, and. I was I was at an uphill battle. The moment he built those flamers, I built with buggies, and he had to pull back. And then he had rockets, you know, fighting my buggies. On, honestly, I felt like my buggies should have done better against the rockets, but that was some poor micromanagement on my part. Um, and then that stealth tank just tore me up. You know, he had tanks to fight my buggies. I didn't really get anything until I had an air unit to fight his tanks. So I was behind at that point by money instead of ahead. And then... You know, rocket squad, kill air, stealth tank, kill air, kill tank, kill air, kill air, kill air. It was ridiculous. <clears throat> but it was a very good match. Very good match. Um, there was no point in that match where I was in control. I mean, I, I had a small 10-point advantage at the beginning that disappeared so quickly. It was well done on his part. And you can tell, I, I, I talk about this a lot in my games, you don't want four buildings, you want two or three. Building-wise, he also had an advantage over me, because I had three, I'm running Barracks, War Factory, and Airfield, just for that Banshee, where he just ran Barracks and War Factory. Um, anyway, very well done. Uh, let's go over GDI Air Superiority. Now this guy... This is my final one for the top five of the day. Um, he's got tens, you know, and I've got nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, seven. So I've got three nines, two eights, and a seven. And he's got two nines, one eight. So he's got an eight for my seven. He's got two nines for my three nines. No, you know what? Let's look at it this way. For my seven, he's got an eight. For my two eights, he's got two nines. And for my three nines, he's got three tens. So he's got me one level advantage across the board on units. Um, and we have very similar armies as far as uh, air goes, because I'm running an air army as well. Not all air, mind you, but <clears throat> I believe I did 
mostly give up on vehicles on this uh, this army. I think the only vehicle I had was the uh, Juggernaut, was it? Anyway. And we both start with the Harvester. And this army of mine is a double Harvester build. Now, I don't start with double Harvesters. I, you know, pop out a Harvester, a couple units, and then I get my other Harvester out when it's safe to do so. Um, and we're fighting with infantry, and even though he's got an infantry advantage, I managed to push him back, and he brings out a buggy to finish me off, so now he's pushing me back. I got rocket squads to deal with his buggies and to deal with his uh, attack bikes. He's coming out with more riflemen. I get out my first little bomber to take out the bikes, but because of his level advantage, can't quite kill the bikes in one hit, so I gotta get out of there. He chases me, I don't get out of there. Uh, I bring in some rocket squads to finish off the bikes. Got some air to finish off his infantry, more riflemen to finish off his infantry. Now, I have to push rockets significantly on this, just because he's got banshees. Um, but I just kind of go back on it a little bit to save my money, because I don't get out my second harvester. Uh, See, so I could build my anti-air to fight his, but doesn't quite win. His air's trashing me pretty good. And again, a lot of this is just level advantage, you know. But I can still take out his, uh, with my bomber, I can take out his uh, 30 cost guys. But then his 100 cost guys just trash mine. Um, now while he's reloading, I'm able to do a little bit of damage. He comes in again with the Banshees. Here's where it really pushes back, though. My rocket squads... Do really good against this Banshee, make him run away. Really good against this Banshee, make him run away again. He runs into my anti-air, that takes him out. Now I've got heavy anti-air, and even though his, again, is beating mine, um, my anti-air is actually better than his, like for the, the level 10 ones, but he's got a lot of other things that have level advantage over me that really helps him out with that. But I just, I'm finishing off his Banshees again and again on that top left. I've got rocket squads trying to hold the point, so he's got to get the infantry in there to do something. And that's when my little air, or my bombers for the buggies, can come in and push him back or just stand on the point. Like there's his Banshee. He should have held the Banshee on the right. Instead, he decided going for the left to try to neutralize everything, but he was a second too late. <clears throat> but that shows a lot of GDI's air superiority, because the Talons are cheaper. They will counter the infantry and fight the air units pretty good. The GDI's air doesn't have the reload time, so it can fight air, I think, better than the Nod's air. But the Phantoms are still pretty good with their burst damage, especially when you have a level advantage like he had. <clears throat> Not that he had it with the Phantoms, necessarily, but... Um, and the Bombers... The Bombers would have done a lot better for me had I had another level on them, just like his Phantoms would have done a lot better for him if he had that other level. So this was a pretty even match with the air, even though he had a full level advantage over me, just because I think GDI's air is better in air combat. Let me clarify that. Um, you know, the Talons are not as good as the Venoms in fighting infantry. The Bombers, I think, are not as good as the Banshees. Um... Actually, the GDI Bombers, I do like better than the Banshees for fighting vehicles, but a lot of that is level-based. If they don't finish off that unit in one shot, which they can usually kill, you know, a pit bull or a Rhino or an attack bike squad in one hit at the same level. But if they're out-leveled and they don't kill it in one shot, then that pit bull or attack bike will kill them if they don't run away. Uh... Which is really bad. The Banshees don't have to worry about the reload time. Yeah, they're going to take a little bit of damage, pretty much guaranteed, but then they're going to finish it off. That's not... They don't have to worry about that hit and run. Plus, the Banshees can fight air where the GDI Bombers cannot. Yes, the Venoms, as I said, are better against infantry, but they don't fight air like the Talons do. So, I mean, that's kind of balanced overall. But if you look at it, you're spending more money on the GDI. And, yes, the cheaper ones can fight air, which... Makes the GDI overall anti-air better with those units, but it's, it, like I said, I, I don't think they're better at fighting infantry, and I don't think, in most cases, they're better at fighting vehicles. They are, however, better at fighting other air units, and their main anti-air unit, which doesn't have the reload time, now, yeah, if the Phantom can take him out in one hit, that's awesome. But the Phantom doesn't take them out in one hit. That reload time is ridiculous. Now, with the last update, it has been lowered. So the Phantoms are now better than they were before. Um, 
And that battle, I believe, was after the update, not before. So he was using those phantoms to the best of their ability, but his are slightly lower level. <clears throat> but the GDI Air is supposed to be able to fire and move at the same time, which not always true. That's questionable because it only seems to do it when it's attacking and in front of the enemy or as it's turning and not moving. Um, but I think out of those two, I prefer the GDI anti-air unit. Um, Talon versus Venom, I prefer the Talon just because it can fight air over the Venom and at the same cost. Same with the anti-air unit. The GDI and the Nod are both the same cost. And the only place out of the main three basic ones where I think Nod has an advantage is the Banshee versus the GDI Bomber. Now, the GDI Bomber, again, is better than the Banshee if it can one-hit enemies. But even then, it's not going to fight air, and it's a higher cost. And it's situationally if it's better or not. You know, if they've got that one extra level, they barely survive it, and now instead of getting completely wiped out and doing almost nothing, they can win and kill your guy. So it's sort of an all-or-nothing deal. <clears throat> so overall, I would prefer to use the Banshee, you know, but... It's situationally better. Um, so yeah, GDI does seem to have an air superiority as far as their basic air units. Now the Nod, however, have a lot more air units. And they've got more versatility in what they can do, I believe. Anyway, but that's it for the top five. Hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.